Hello friends, welcome to Islington Listens, wisdom from a community of faith that doesn't think the same, vote the same, or love the same, but we are trying our best to follow in the way of Jesus with compassion and hope. Hello friends, welcome to Islington Listens. We're so excited to step into this third of our series about finding God in the ordinary. May the words of scripture, may the prayers, and just this time draw you closer to God. Let us pray. God, on this summer day, we draw closer to your presence in community and on our own. We find ourselves open to listen to your ancient words proclaimed anew. Be the wisdom we seek be the peace we need as we share in this tradition of proclaiming your praise and glory. Amen. Hear these ancient words from Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. For God has founded it on the seas and established it on the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in this holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false, and do not swear deceitfully. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek God, who seek the face of God. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. And who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Herein lies wisdom. Thanks be to God. I'd like to share with you three versions of the parable of the sower. We find the first one in the Gospel of Matthew. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on a path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. If you have ears, hear. And this scripture can also be found in the Gospel of Luke chapter 8. When a large crowd was gathering, as people were coming to him from town after town, Jesus said in a parable, A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell on the path and was trampled on, and the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on rock, and as it grew, it withered for lack of moisture. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. Some fell into good soil, and when it grew, it produced a hundredfold. As he said this, he called out, If you have ears to hear, then hear. This can also be found in the Gospel of Mark, which most scholars say was the first gospel written. Let's hear it. Again, he began to teach beside the sea. Such a very large crowd gathered around Jesus that Jesus got into a boat on the sea and sat there, while the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. He began to teach them many things in parables, and in his teaching, he said to them, Listen, A sower went out to sow, and as the sower sowed, some seed fell on a path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground, and where it did not have much soil, it sprang up quickly since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain." Other seed fell into good soil and brought forth grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. And he said to them, If you have ears to hear, then hear. In the Gospel of Mark, the scripture continues on. 
When Jesus was alone, those who were around him, along with the twelve, asked Jesus about the parables. And he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those outside, everything comes in parables. In order that they may indeed look but not perceive, and may indeed hear but not understand, so they may not turn again and be forgiven. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand all the parables? For the sower sows the word, and these are the ones on the path where the word is sown. When they hear, the evil one immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. When they hear the word, they immediately receive it with joy, but they have no root and endure only for a while. Then when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are those sown among the thorns. These are the ones who hear the word, but the cares of the age and the lure of wealth and the desire for other things come in and choke the word, and it yields nothing. And these are the ones sown on the good soil. They hear the word and accept it and bear fruit thirty, sixty, and a hundredfold. Herein lies wisdom, or the word of good news. Thanks be to God. These parables are given to us as a gift. They're old. They are a treasure. They're presents given to us before we were born. They're ours, even if we don't know what they are. In fact, they often are hard to enter. You might be ready to hear a parable, but it might not open for you like a closed door. Sometimes parables seem close to us even when we're ready. We're invited to keep coming back to them, and one day they will open. As we wonder with this parable of the, sto- of the sower, I am reminded that the first way to wonder is to begin. There was once someone who did such amazing things and said such wonderful things that people followed him. And as they followed him, they heard him speaking about a kingdom. And the kingdom was not like the one they lived in. It was not like a kingdom anyone had ever visited. And it was not like any kingdom anyone had ever heard of. So they had to ask him, what is the kingdom of heaven like? And one day when they asked him, he said, the kingdom of heaven is like when a sower, someone who plants seeds goes out to sow. And as he sows, some seeds fell on the path and the birds came. And some of the seeds also fell among the stones. And when the seeds tried to put their little roots down among the stones, they could not push them all the way in. And when the sun came out, it scorched the seeds and they died. And some of the seeds also fell among the thorns. When the seeds tried to push their little roots down among the thorns, they could push them part way in. But the thorns choked them and they died. Some of the seeds fell in the good earth. And when the seeds pushed their little roots down into the good earth, they could all go in all the way. So they grew and they grew. And when they were all grown up, they were ripe for the harvest. And then they were cut off and gathered up. And the harvest was 30, 60, and 100 bushels. At Islington, when we hear this story and share this story in a circle of children in godly play, we have moments to wonder about what Jesus might have really meant. I wonder if the sower had a name. I wonder if the sower was happy when the birds came and ate the seeds. I wonder if the birds have names. I wonder what the sower was doing when the little seeds could not get their roots in among the stones. I wonder what the sower was doing when the little seeds were choked by the thorns. I wonder what the sower was doing when the little seeds were growing in the good earth. I wonder what the harvest could really be. I wonder how much the sower used for seeds. I wonder how much the sower sold. I wonder how much the sower kept for food. I wonder if the sower was surprised at the harvest. 
I wonder what part of the whole thing surprised the sower most. I wonder what part of the whole thing surprised you the most. The prophet Jeremiah used parables with great skill. He compared God to a potter who discarded a clay pot that wasn't shaping up properly and started over again. Can I not do with you, Israel, as the potter does with his clay? God asked through Jeremiah. Paul coined the metaphor in his second letter to Corinthians 4, chapter 4, verse 7. He intended it to apply to the divine message conveyed by frail and fallible human bodies. Appearances can be deceiving, they said. It's what's inside that matters. What about objects that have little value in themselves, that are easy to overlook, yet they cannot be judged only by their own merit? For without these earthen pots, there might be no treasure. Like God the potter who discards the old, which no longer functions and creates anew, we need constantly to create new earthen vessels to hold God's truths. Jim Taylor wrote us a new version of this parable, an everyday parable of seeds and sowers. Let's hear it now. It looked like it was snowing outside the other day, except for the warm sun beaming down. There were white flakes drifting in the air and settling into the fresh growing grass and the blowing in the wind. It was, of course, the cottonwood trees dispersing more fluffy seeds than the dollars involved in any of the real estate sales around. Before the cottonwoods, the Chinese elms scattered their seeds wildly. And after the cottonwoods, the maples will do the same, as will dandelions, milkweed, and who knows what other plants. It all seems colossally inefficient. You'd think that if God were smart enough to design every detail of the universe as the proponents of intelligent design argue, God would, God would be smart enough to figure out a less wasteful system. I mean, look what happens. Some of the seeds fall on paved roads where they cannot possibly establish roots. The cars drive over and crush the seeds. The rain washes them into the sewers and the sun bakes them dry. Other seeds fall on rocky ground like the gravel beaches along the lake. There's water there but no soil. The seeds germinate but the sprouts quickly wither in the sun and wash away when storm waves sluice along the shore. Still other seeds fall among thorns and weeds. The other plants have a head start. They grab more of the rain and block the sunshine. They choke out the struggling seeds. Only a small percentage of the seeds fall on good soil. Each germinating seed sends down tiny roots that gather nutrients. The small plant gains strength and establishes itself as a thriving young tree. And in time, that tree too will flower and form seeds, multiplying itself not just 30 or 60 or 100 times, but millions of times. And then it will scatter those seeds just as indiscriminately, as extravagantly as its parent trees did. On roads, on rocks, among weeds and thorns, most seeds will fail to thrive, but again, a few seeds will fall on fertile soil and start the process once more. We think we've heard this story before. We've heard it three different times in the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. We also know it was included in the non-canonical Gospel of Thomas. But I think whoever wrote this parable and then added that explanation that we heard in the Gospel of Mark might have missed the point. In the Gospels, Jesus' explanation comes across as a self-congratulation by the disciples and followers. They saw themselves as the good soil so that any teachings Jesus planted in them would produce a rich harvest. Well, that's a natural reaction. If seeds could think a point on which I won't attempt to expand, any seed that settles on fertile topsoil would probably congratulate itself on being the chosen vehicle for passing life along. But at its heart, I think the parable is about how God works. God does not dispense gifts one by one to those who will generate the best returns. Rather, God works like those cottonwood trees. God scatters possibilities wildly, extravagantly, without regard for race, or creed, status, or gender. And then God waits to see where those seeds will root. 
I wonder how this parable will live in your life this week. I wonder how you will notice how extraordinary the ordinary is. I'm so grateful to Jim Taylor for his wisdom, but also for the chance to wonder together. Blessings. Thanks for listening, friends. For other ways to connect, go to IslingtonUnited.org. May God's wisdom and love keep finding you.